Welcome to the new season of the Bundesliga and another campaign for Marie's Bundesliga Minutes. We are in the middle of match day two, um, so it's time for an early diagnosis of where the teams stand. And in this episode, I'm gonna focus on the clubs that are chasing down Bayern Munich. Because as you know, Bayern Munich has won the German title for the ninth consecutive season in the summer. And no one really wants it to be a 10th time. I'm not, I, I actually think that some Bayern Munich fans even secretly don't want that because we want to show that the league can be thrilling and can have a title race. And you know, of those nine years, there were some very epic title races, but all of them ended with Bayern um, on the top of the podium. So today I'm going to talk about the clubs that want to push Bayern off. Um, the head of the podium and uh, let's start with RB Leipzig because they played on Friday and they crushed it um, they won 4-0 um, they had a sensational game and um, actually they might you know there may have been uh, Shobolai the um, Hungarian player may have just scored the the goal of the match day a beautiful shot um, from the edge of the box on the right side just Fully like kicked it through with his boot and it landed in the um, far left corner of the net. Um, it was a great team effort and some of the new signings actually really slotted in well into that team. Um, so as always Leipzig did good summer business and um, it'll be interesting to see how some of those players perform going forward. Um, Shabolai and Huang had come in the previous transfer window but they both dealt with injuries and adjustment times and it'd be very cool to see how they adapt now. Um, Shabalai, his playing style is a bit reminiscent of Kevin De Bruyne, at least when he was in the Bundesliga. So um, kind of like an attack-minded central midfielder uh, with a great drive towards goal and a really a ruthless quality in like finding the last pass um, that kind of cuts through defensive, cuts through the defensive line and shooting and just really finding the most vertical way towards um, yeah, the opposition's um, defensive area. So that was a good start to the match day. Um, it re yet remains to be seen who Leipzig's big goal scorer is gonna be moving forward, but in a way that makes them more of a threat because you never know as a defense, you know, it's not like Dortmund with Erling Haaland, like you don't know who you're gonna man mark. Um, and Danny Olmo, who did very well at the Euros for Spain and then at the Olympics, and is now, you know, kind of being rested and being, you know, Jesse Marsh, the new American coach, just letting him slide easily into the new season because he's had a busy summer. Once he slips into that lineup, that's another attacking force. So really interesting to see what happens with them. Um, and also defensively, how they adjust now that um, Konate has left for Liverpool and Upamecano has left for Bayern Munich, of course. Um, so, you know, against bigger opposition, it'll be fascinating to see how they cope defensively. Um, now, the next rival is, of course, Borussia Dortmund. And despite their very convincing thrashing of Eintracht Frankfurt last weekend, they had a lot more trouble in the Black Forest, um, this beautiful area in Southwest Germany with the warmest climate in Germany. Um, and they played in the idyllic Schwarzwaldstadion in Freiburg, um, in a university town. And the Schwarzwaldstadion is interesting because the size of the pitch is actually not, you know, uniform UEFA rules. It's like a meter less wide than it's supposed to be. And it's got like a special kind of um, chocolate box atmosphere. And it can be a really hard place to play. And Dortmund really struggled and Freiburg um, you know, deservedly won. They actually led 2-0 for a long time uh, until Dortmund was able to pull one back and um, they had a sensational game and you know every year Freiburg is seen as a p possible candidate for relegation and every year somehow um, Christian Streich, their long time and uh, very guru-like coach um, who's a bit of a hippie celebrity in Germany because he likes to make political statements um, so he's like a leftist icon, um, every year he gets the most out of his players. And uh, we saw a beautiful free kick by Vincenzo Grifo, um, who has been capped by Italy in the past. And 
is a fantastically able player, a street foot, um, Straßenfußballer, as we like to say in Germany, like a street baller, someone who learned to play on tarmac, um, on these, you know, courts, like these cage-like courts in Germany and has that technique where he, you know, he does something fun sometimes. And um, yeah, so he had a great game. And then Scholloi, um, spelled S-A-L-L-A-I. So not the Scholloi that is the striker with Mainz, but a different Scholloi who's younger. Um, he's a winger, he also did very well uh, for Hungary in the Euros and it's actually surprising to many that he stayed at Freiburg because um, he has looked sharp in the last Bundesliga campaign and in this one. Uh, he was very bright again in that game and he scored two, um, so a deserved 2-1 win for Dortmund. And in some ways it really showed <coughs> how reliant they are on Erling Haaland who um, was you know, often double marked and didn't have a, a very good game, which is normal because he's young. Um, but now with the departure of Jaden Sancho, they are somehow easier to defend against um, because Haaland is really like the target man. Uh, Rafael Guerrero, um, who has recently returned from injury, actually um, got to participate in the game in the second half and come on and he helped get that um, left side going a little bit. But overall, a disappointing showing from Dortmund and um, questions will be asked, you know, moving forward um, about if they can get important games, you know, dirty wins against opposition like that. And then we have the kind of top match um, of this match day, which was hosted by Bayer Leverkusen and they um, hosted Borussia Mönchengladbach. And that was a sensationally fun game to watch um, with some brilliant young players. Um, Leverkusen have sneakily over the last two years or so signed some of the most exciting European talents um, from the French League. Uh, from They have also signed uh, Paulinho two years ago from the Brazilian League. Paulinho had a very good Olympic campaign for Brazil. He won a gold medal. And um, he came to Leverkusen at the age of 18, but didn't have an immediate impact because he actually had an ACL, he tore his ACL. So he was out for a long time. And it's typical for um, a lot of young Brazilian players to, you know, struggle adapting to Germany and like the, the coldness of the weather and sometimes the coldness of the culture. But now he's really made it his home and uh, he's looking very promising. But actually what stuck up to me in this game was the fullbacks, the pair of fullbacks that we saw Backer, who was signed from PSG this summer um, and it looks destined to be a fan favorite. He has like a mane of bright blonde hair and it's very distinguishable from the ranks. Um, had some great crosses and looked very good in this game. And then on the right hand side, we had um, Jeremy Frimpong, the Dutch um, under 21 international, um, who was just sensational um, on that flank along with Musa Diaby in front of him. And um, they really gave Joe Scali, the young American, um, you know, their opposition player on that flank, because Joe Scali played on and left back for Gladbach. They gave him a nightmare of a day. And uh, I'm sure both of them will appear in his dreams. <laughs> um, and then bless Joe Scali, because obviously he did so well against Bayern last weekend and he's only 18 years old and has a bright future ahead of him. Um, Joe Scali actually made way for Ben Sebaini, um, who is their regular starter and who's back from injury. And Ben Sebaini also had trouble with these two players. So um, they're really fun, that combination, that, you know, understanding between the, the right back and the right winger in uh, Frimbong and um, Diaby. It reminds me a little bit of the heyday of um, Ashraf Hakimi and um, Jaden Sancho at Dortmund, who just like blindly trusted each other and knew where the other player was gonna sprint, knew the spaces they were gonna slot into and could just pass it through. Um, so it'd be really curious um, to see, you know, how they continue to develop moving forward. Um, Patrick Schick actually, um, interestingly, did not score, but um, showed that he's a, a real poacher, a real goal getter. And, you know, Leverkusen won four nil, and I think Patrick Schick might have been the only unhappy Leverkusen player in that game. Um, yeah, so those are kind of the main competitors that I think are going to be likely to threaten Bayern Munich this season and uh, really play for those Champions League spots. And we always have a surprise team, so it remains to be seen um, who that team can be this season. Um, but the kind of contenders that I mentioned, just as a reminder, 
we have Leipzig with their new coach Jesse Marsh, um, who came from um, their sister club RB Salzburg and was previously in New York. Um, then we have um, Borussia Dortmund, of course, under Marco Rose, who joined from Gladbach. Then we have Gladbach under their new coach, Adi Hütter, who joined from Frankfurt. So, you know, you've got like a real merry-go-round carousel or mo moving chairs, so to speak, of Bundesliga coaches. And then we have Gladbach's uh, opposition of today, um, a city just about 40 miles away, um, also in North Rhine-Westphalia, um, that is home to a worldwide known pharmaceutical company called Bayer, and um, that's Bayer Leverkusen. And Bayer Leverkusen is that fourth force that I would say, um, you know, we should reckon with this season. And uh, yeah, that's it. Tomorrow, um, I mean, tomorrow in today's time, <laughs> but Sunday, you know, Bayern is going to play Cologne um, and we'll see what happens there. But um, yeah, that's it for my first episode. So uh, I hope you tune in next time. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Marie Shubo. That's M-A-R-I-E. S-C-H-U-B-O and stay up to date uh, with the Transfer Exchange Show. All right, see you next time. Bye.